Hi, I'm Caitlin, and welcome to video 11 of the Quick Start series for the Analog Discovery 2. In this video, we'll go over the static I.O. tool. Static inputs and outputs can be used for sensing and generating change of state instances. The Analog Discovery 2 provides 16 channels of digital I.O., giving plenty of options. It is important to note that the digital I.O. on the Analog Discovery 2 is not intended to be used as a source for large loads. It is not recommended to connect more than a single LED and resistor. If you do need to drive a larger load, the digital I.O. can be used as triggers for a high current source, such as a MOSFET or an H-bridge. The static I.O. can be accessed through digital pins 0 through 15. To open the static I.O., click on Static I.O. in the navigation bar in Waveforms 2015. Another important note is that the static I.O. tool opens running, so be sure to stop it before changing any pins to outputs. The menu bar across the top contains File, Control, View, and Window. File lets you save the current static I.O. project, open a save configuration, or close the window. Control gives you access to the tool's run and stop commands. View gives you the option to show the names of the channels. With show name checked, a label box will appear below each pin with a default name. This name can be edited to correspond with your application. Window lets you browse between the windows you have open. To open a tool in a separate window, click this button. Each digital channel is set to an input. The default input is a virtual LED. If you supply a logic high value to that channel, the LED will turn red to reflect the change of state. Just as the channels are divided physically, in Waveforms 2015 they are divided into two groups, 0 through 7 and 8 through 15. On the left side, you can control each group of pins. If bit I.O. is checked, you can set all the pins in that group to the same type. Last I.O. sets the pins to the last channel setting. LED is the default setting and sets all channels to inputs with a virtual LED. The LED will light when a logic high is detected. The Analog Discovery 2 defaults to 3.3 volts for logic high, but all digital pins are 5 volt tolerant. In the event of an accidental overvoltage, up to 20 volts of protection is supported. Button contains a menu of different types of buttons based on the output states that are desired. One corresponds to a logic high, zero corresponds to a logic low, and Z corresponds to a high impedance state. Switch is very similar to button, except that since it is a switch, it will hold the state, whereas the button is momentary. In the switch, in addition to two state options, you have the option of three states. In addition to being able to configure the entire group of channels, each channel can be configured individually with a number corresponding to that channel. Below bit I.O. in the group control, you will see slider, progress bar, and seven segment. This will configure the entire 8-bit group as a bus. Slider is an 8-bit output bus. You can slide or manually input the digital value you want the bus to represent. Progress bar is an 8-put input bus. The 8 channels indicate a value represented in binary with the highest channel representing the most significant bit. To the right of the progress bar, the decimal value is shown. The last option is 7 segment, which allows you to assign the 8 channels to a segment in a virtual 7 segment display. Each channel number is displayed on the corresponding segment. Now you know some basic information about the static I.O. tool. In the next video, we'll go over the logic analyzer. Subscribe to stay up to date to Digilance products and services. Thanks for watching.